Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. This is Harry Muppet. Welcome back to another Daily Masters, and we're going to be playing a TVZ here today. I'm not even sure if I need to introduce these guys, because, I mean, they're such well-known players. They're right up the top of the WCS, and they always play awesome games. It is, of course, Zhedong, down the bottom right side of the map, as the red Zerg player. I wish I could zoom in further than this, but unfortunately I can't. And yeah, good old Zhedong. And down at the bottom left side of the map, it is going, of course, to be Storm Pult. So, otherwise known as Pult. CM Storm is actually part of the team. It's actually the team that he's playing for. And it's interesting, actually, that he's not part of their clan. I don't know, maybe they... No, actually, I think, I think what the th case is, is that... Um... He's, uh, he's not, there's, let, let me just think for a second, I don't think he's actually part, this is not his normal server, because, if I remember correctly at the start of the game, he was actually in Bronze League, so, yeah, he's not actually in Bronze League, he's just, obviously, he, like, he normally plays in North America, or something like that, and now he's playing in Europe, or something like that. <laughs> yeah, one, one or the other, I'm not sure which league he normally plays in, I'm guessing... North America. Actually, we uh, we are going to end up looking him up after all, just to see what the default one is. Uh, I do remember it being North America off the top of my head, but I may be hopelessly wrong. And, I mean, well, he's, he's from South Korea, but that doesn't really tell us much, because uh, South Korean players are playing all over the world, man. And, yeah, so that really doesn't tell me anything about uh, where he's playing. It might, a it might actually be... This might actually be a North American server, because I do remember, off the top of my head, that Jadon was playing in uh, North America. But maybe I'm wrong, because this is the WCS, and I don't know if it was played in North America. I have a funny feeling it was played in Korea, but I may be hopelessly wrong about that. We are just going further and further down the, uh, down the drain in terms of, uh, in terms of correct information. Um, let's actually look up the WCS now. Uh, yeah, because there's not much going else going on this game. Early Command Center. That's, yes, the Command Center. I'm not confusing it with the Nexus. I always do that, but... Yeah, where is WCS? Oh, they're doing something for the Grand Final or something. Uh, where is Season 2? God damn it, I am so lost. I am so lost. Here we go. Season... No, oh, recent, it's, it's too far away, it's too far ago. I don't know where they threw it. Um, screw it, whatever. We're just going to be casting this game because I, I have, I have, we've got no information so far except that I am hopelessly lost when it comes to searching for things on the web page. I basically look at the page and then it has a list of previous tournaments and if the previous, the tournament I want isn't in that recent list, then I am screwed. I just cannot find it, so... Let's uh, get on the good old follow mode for this Ling. He's going to run in. He's going to run straight out. I like how it's got a nice, smooth sort of camera thing. So he does he does a quick turnaround. It doesn't just sort of jag around like that. It's a nice, smooth sort of thing. I actually bought a video camera that does that. When you, uh, you put the video camera in your hand and you shake it all around and... It doesn't actually, um, it doesn't, it doesn't get really jagged, it sort of tries to smooth it off. And I think it's a digital effect, because it can't be an analog effect, that's just way too crazy. It's like a little, like a little handicap, so I gotta feel like it's a digital effect, but... Yeah! So, Zhedong has his second base, he's got his third base down, we have a sporting pool so far. And he does not have Ling Speed yet, but he does have both of the gas on his expansion, so that's pretty nice. I guess most Zerg players feel like the gas on their main is a bit too exposed or something for like drops and stuff like that. Definitely the second is much better defended because there will be queens down here for the purposes of uh, just keeping this gate alive. He could have gated that a little bit closer maybe, I don't know, it's all good. So yeah, so definitely there will be more queens down here to bridge this gap. So there will be more queens to defend this expansion than there will be to defend the main. Maybe that's why they put the gas down here at the start. Because, I mean, you don't need gas and you get the expansion early enough. So, you might as well put it down here. Get the defense a bit better going. Not quite able to take out that cream tumor. But Polk does have four Hellions out on the map now. And... 
Yeah, it's, it's not gonna it's not gonna help him too much. I mean, there's not really too much that he can do, even with four Hellions. I mean, there we go. Now the two, so six Hellions starting to become a threat for Queens, and is definitely going to be holding up any sort of uh, traversal of workers over to this base until Jadong is satisfied that he's uh, going to be in a good position. But yeah, definitely a lone queen over here could quite easily get owned. Look at that, they're even managing to kill the Lavas, man. That's pretty insane. Two Queens coming out. Of course, as I said, a single Queen would get owned by this many Hellions. But two Queens? It's probably going to be enough. And here we go. Polt having his third base already. Seems looking pretty good. Roach is starting to come out. And the Hellions? Uh, they, they're trying to do something, but they got barely a third of the health off that Roach. And one Hellion just went down like nobody's business. So obviously not a good way to go. Looks like Polt is going for a ton of barracks here. He's got his third base up. Has not moved it over yet. Getting the uh, traditional small amount of... Oh, look at these guys, man. They're actually just going for crazy scouting. He's actually going to see the fourth base here. So a fourth base at the nine minute mark. Jadong is going pretty nuts with the expansion timing. And he's going to be looking at doing a very, very strong economic game. A very, very strong macro game. Excuse me. So yeah, Polt is definitely going to have to push out. He sees the fourth base. He knows he needs a third base right now. I mean, two base versus four base, Zerg. It's not. It's just not going to happen. So, got to get that third out. Got to start getting the workers out. He's not too far behind. With um, eleven workers behind, it's it's not horrible. Obviously, it's not good either. But it's not horrible. A couple of Hellions coming back here. I thought these were widow mines for a sec, but no, just uh, just Hellions. So. Two more, they must have been the surviving members of that Hellion pack, maybe? Or maybe there's just two that Polt had around in the back of his base and decided to send them out, so... Regardless, regardless, he's doing, uh, he's doing pretty good. Jadong definitely has the economy, he's jumped up another nine workers. And Polt is scooting along with the workers as fast as he can, but of course the amount of workers he can build is very limited. And it's nice to see... Of course, he's a master player, so you'd expect him. But it's nice to see that he always keeps three workers coming out, no matter what's going on. And he doesn't queue them up, either. You can see they jump back to one, and then they jump straight back up to three. Well, there we go, three. So this is, this is a case of a few seconds. And I mean, a lot of players, if they want to get a serious amount of macro going, they'd actually queue them up. They'd queue them up, but that is 50 minerals that's basically not doing anything right now. You could be spending on other stuff. And that's why these master level players never queue anything up because you never know when you might want to just grab something else on the spur of a moment when uh, he might see like a special bit of tech that Jadong has built and suddenly he's like, all right, I've got to get a ghost academy right now. Or, all right, I've got to get a second factory and an army out right now. And those buildings take a while to build. So if you've got the minerals there, if they're not sitting in your command center, just uh, waiting for a... SCV to be built, then you get them that much earlier. You don't have to go around to the command centers and cancel things, and it's beautiful. The only downside is you have to be on top of your game. You have to make sure that when the workers are finished building, and you don't have a beautiful display like this, like we've got, you actually have to know that the worker is finished building. So you constantly got to be keeping an eye on the command center. I assume he doesn't want any more workers. He's not just doing a massive mess up here. But 64 is a pretty decent number. Of course, Jadog has 80. Jadog is completely off the chain right now. But, I mean, yeah, look at this. Polt is uh, halfway to level 2. Jadog is just about finished level 2, though, but he's not getting roach upgrades. So I feel like these guys are kind of a standover from the early to mid game. He's not going to be his main focus. His main focus actually does look a, like a decent amount of infestors. He's kind of shaping up to Mutaling, but he's decided to go for... Uh, Infestaling instead, which is a pretty pretty nice tactic. Uh, yeah, it's a pretty nice tactic. The fungals are gonna crap all over the marines, and the widow mines, uh, they, they're gonna do all right. But the infestors are fairly bulky, so you just he should be all right. I feel like I I feel like yeah. I mean, with the infested terrors as well and the fungal growth, I feel like Jadog has a very good chance to do some very very nice play in this because we've never really seen infestaling thrown at um, Marine Widow Mine before. And it's going to be very, very interesting to see how well it does. And it's going to be very, very interesting to see what sort of tech 
Holt is going to throw at him because I don't know. Maybe you stick. You probably just stick for the uh, the Triple M Widow Mine for a while. But I do not know whether it's going to be up to uh, J Dog's massive economy, or just up to his uh, better unit composition, or just up to the ultras. I I have a feeling that uh, Pult. I do not know. I do not know if he can uh, make it work against this because uh, I definitely like this playstyle. The infestors in there, all the fungal growths. They're going to do so much damage. And I mean, we've definitely seen Infesta Ultra used before. That's a very, very powerful combination. Because, of course, the only way you can possibly deal with the Ultras is to stim and kite away from them. And when you are fungled, you cannot kite. You just get stuck there, and then the Ultras rip you apart. Nice attack here by Jadon. There is uh, no planetary there, so it just lifts off, and he's going to be blocking that. Very nice, but Holt, meanwhile, continuing to put the pressure on. He is not being backed away by these guys, continuing to put the pressure on. And Jadong is holding him off quite easily, I feel like. I feel like Jadong isn't really having to uh, spend a crap load getting rid of these guys. He's got a decent amount of Lings and Bailings. Not a crap load of Bailings, but he doesn't really need a lot, because Polt isn't really coming in en masse with a massive army. He's just got these little groups here and there. And Jadon just takes them out as they come in. I mean, Polt's starting to get a little bit of momentum here. And the link numbers are starting to get a little bit low. But that's because Jadon is saving up for a ton of Ultras. And they are nearly out. But the timing... There we go. He, he's just, he realizes he can't quite wait for the Ultras. So there's about 28 Lings coming out now. Nice Fungal is going to be shooting a few of these guys away. But... Jadog making a bit of a mistake, not getting a ton of links. He was waiting for the Ultras, so he did. He thought, all right, I don't need the links yet. I'll just wait for the Ultras. But there was a point, and Polt pushed hard enough. He killed all the links, and suddenly Jadog was like, shit, the Ultras aren't going to get here in time. I need something right now. And he built a crap load of links, but just as the links were uh, getting built, Holt managed to push in and take out that third base. And man, what an excellent, excellent job. But j Dog right now is going to be uh, turning around, going straight back in, back in. And with the Ultras in his army, Polt is, yeah, he's going to be changing up a little bit. He was already getting a ton of Marauders, so he's going to keep on getting a ton of Marauders. And he should be fine with that. So we'll see, though. He's, he's having to use up a scan to take care of that Ling. Very, very annoying. But Jadong getting his third base back up. He's already got a four, so he's not in a dangerous position at all. They've lost a few workers each, but nothing really, really crazy. And Jadong, he's uh, obviously happy with the number of festers he's got because he's just building ultras and lings at the moment. And yeah, these guys are not really doing much except to, uh, of course, confuse the commentators by leaving a lot of blue dots. I keep thinking these are widow mines, but. No, they are changelings, and Jadon could move them back into the force if he wanted to, but... Oh, managed to take... The, oh, it actually, Jadon managed to cancel it, so very, very nice. It's a nice force cancel by Polt, but it was a nice job actually cancelling it by Jadon. So, it still, it still hurts, though. It still really, really hurts. Using up one link on the Widow Mine, the Planetary coming down... And, oh, he's going to lose quite a few Ultras here. Bailey's actually rolling in with the Ultra Force. Not really getting a lot, but the Ultras do manage to take out the Planetary with all that DPS. Widow Mines, however, doing a massive amount of damage to these Ultras. Just absolutely massive. I mean, these guys have a lot of armor, but armor does not help when you're getting hit by a single, single high target damage. I mean, 125 damage. Doesn't matter if you got six or seven armor because that's still 120, 118 damage or something. So armor does pretty much nothing versus the widow mine attacks. So yeah, just really, really nice. And the sheer fact that Polt has so many marauders coming out four at a time is just really, really awesome. I mean, he's still a little bit behind on the upgrades. Uh, Jado already has three, three. Polt's still trying to get three, three. Still halfway there, but he's doing all right. And every time the Jadog loses this base, he uh, goes ahead and he wipes out this base for Pulse. So he's definitely keeping it nice and even. Although, I don't know, because as a Zerg, you want to be one base ahead. And Jadog is not one base ahead. He's fighting to have the same amount of bases that Polt has. So, yeah, I still would not say that he's, uh, he's extremely ahead. 
And here we go, Jadok actually getting quite a lot of Corruptors. He obviously just wants to get rid of these Medivacs. There's just too many Medivacs on the field. How many does he have? He's got eight Corruptors, so that's a pretty decent number. And just building a ton of Lings. Or oh, this, the Corruptors may not be for the Medivacs, they may be for something else. He may be thinking about Broodlords. And that would be crazy. I, like, literally crazy, because he'd have no anti-air. Unless he uh, mixed in Corruptors with the Broodlords, so... Yeah, but Polt saw the Corruptors, he's like, instantly, alright, i got to get Vikings. And three Starports, three more Starports, because he's already had one pumping out Medivacs the whole day, so he's getting three more Starports, and we're going to be seeing some mad Viking production coming out very, very soon. I mean, Polt is not going to be underestimating the power of a potential Broodlord uh, invasion. These guys coming around, they don't see a base over there, so... That's pretty good, but Polt going in. Once again, going to be trying to take out this third base. He loves attacking this third base. And I think he will get it once again. He's just got so many forces. They're losing health like nobody's business, but... No, they're actually... They're not pushing in. They're choosing to take out the Ultras instead. The Ultras all go down, leaving these forces relatively free, but Ling's flanking them as well. The Terran force is getting so low, but it's got just enough to finish these guys off. Where are all Jadong's forces? They're all down here, taking care of this... Two-pronged attack on the main base. So, beautiful job. And look at all those dead guys, man. Really, really bad. So, once again, once again, Polt, sorry, Jadong, losing this base. And now, Jadong has to counter back and take out another base again. He's got to trade off bases again, but I don't know. He got pretty, ha he got hammered pretty hard back there. He's still in the lead, sort of, but I think this may be just be worker advantage. I don't know if he's got... This sort of army to take out these guys. He's got a crap load of lings, but his ultras pretty much all dead. His corruptors all dead. He looks like he lost all the infestors there as well. That is a huge blow. Absolutely huge losing all that infestors. And is I don't think he's gonna be able to save up the gas to build all of those up anytime soon. I mean he's building four, but he needs that gas for brood laws and ultras and all that sort of stuff, so I don't know whether he wants to get it for infestors. Um, let's see, do they actually, t I think they may have taken out his Great Aspire as well. What a, what a beautiful attack by Polt there. Really, really nice. Main attack here, taking out this hatchery. Side attack there, took out the Spire. Absolutely fantastic. The Great Aspire is going to be going down here. And he's also delayed Broodlords for a very, very long time. So I really like that attack from Polt. Let's see if he can really put the advantage down. He's sending his main force over here, relatively undefended, and this is a brand new base with a ton of minerals in it. So Jadog being caught off guard quite a bit here, and he is going to start to suffer for this. I mean, the Ultras just by themselves with such a high marauder concentration in this force from Polt, not going to be doing all that well. I mean, there's two Ultras left, and they're going to be doing a decent job. But, no, one goes down, the other one goes down. Polt is not even running. He's choosing to just destroy these Ultras. And finishes off the hatchery. And then he's going to be getting out of there. And Jadong, man, just defeat after defeat after defeat. And these are not small defeats, man. He has been losing actual mining bases. Actual tech structures that he cared about. And a lot of units have been going down. So, the question of uh, whether the... Uh, Infestor Ultra Ling sort of a combination would just own Triple M Plus Widow Mine, I think has been very, very easily answered because Polt just continued to steam on with his uh, with his tactic and he's been having so much success with it. Uh, maybe potentially even better with Muta Ling because, yeah, I mean, it's, he's just so fast. He can just do everything all over the place and it's very, very hard for a Jadog to see them coming because he's so spread out and yeah even with the creep man he just can't get around there fast enough he should be able to hold off this attack but I don't know I mean they stim they run in the base goes down he's trying to defend this but I think Jadog will hold off here he's got his main force and these guys reinforcements though and this this is just crazy Terran macro right here I thought the Zerg macro was crazy but the Terran macro is insane. I mean, he's on four bases. He's getting the fifth base down. Tried to. I feel like this base just cannot land. But if we have a look, he's doing such a good job. And he's been keeping Shadog's economy behind the entire game. I cannot count how many times this hatchery has died. We actually... This unit's lost. 
I feel like that must be the unit's loss because it's impossible to actually have that many limbs alive at once. Or it, it's not impossible, but it's basically impossible. So, yeah, wow. Just if we have a look, that's seven thousand more minerals that J Dog has lost. That uh, that Pont has not lost. So he's doing a great job trading his armies out, and he's doing a great job with Marty. I was going to have a look at this. He's sort of ahead, but not not a ton. He's actually lost a lot of harvesters. Wow. Just, I, I don't know how he lost all those harvesters. Probably all these attacks around here and all these attacks over there. But in the end, he just, he just out macro J-Dog. Just did a fantastic job. And yeah, congratulations to Polt for an extremely, extremely well-earned victory right there. And yeah, thank you very much to you guys for watching my video, watching my Daily Masters. And stay tuned tomorrow for another one, which I'll be casting not tonight because my nose is a little bit blocked and it's not fun to cast when your nose is a little bit blocked. So anyway, I'll catch you guys tomorrow. Uh, stay tuned. This has been Harry Muppet. I hope you enjoyed this game.